This is the last video in chapter eight. We're combining 8.6 and 8.7 to do all one video for surface area of prisms and pyramids. So first thing we wanna talk about, what is surface area? These are your notes for 8.6 and 8.7. Surface area and total area are synonyms. They both represent the area of the outer faces of a solid figure. So first things first, you could see a problem that asks you for the surface area, you could see a problem that asks you for the total area. They mean the exact same thing. Nine times out of ten, you're going to see surface area. But just be prepared that total area, synonym. Surface area, total area, they are when we add up all the areas of the outside of the figure. And the best way that I can think to explain surface area would be, imagine that you built this birdhouse. <clears throat> and you built it, you're very proud of it, but you want to paint it. You want to paint it whatever color you love. And if you're going to paint this birdhouse, you are going to paint the, this piece of the roof. You're going to paint along here. You're going to paint here. You want to paint that side of the roof. You want to paint the front. You want to paint the side, the back, the bottom, the other side. Pretty much you want to paint every surface on the outside of the birdhouse. Everything that you'd be painting would be the surface area. So surface area is when we take all the shapes that make up a prism or a pyramid and we find all their areas and then we add those areas back together. So just a review, surface area is area so it's measured in square units. We're not filling the birdhouse with anything, we're just painting the outside of it. To find surface area there are three steps. First we're going to sketch every face of the solid figure and on those faces we're going to label the dimensions or the measurements that go along with that face. Then we find the area of each face, and finally we add together all the areas. These problems are very, very easy. They just take a little bit of work to get finished. So let's see our first example. Here we have number one from your note packet. This is a triangular prism, and you can see that there are quite a few shapes that are used to make up this prism. The first shape that I want to take a look at is shape number one here, and it is that triangle. I want to sketch that triangle. I'll do this as well as I can. I want to sketch that triangle, and I want to label its dimensions. The important dimensions in that triangle are the base and the height. That's the three centimeter piece here and the four centimeter piece here. The last thing I want to do is make note of how many of these triangles are in my prism. Well, remember, prisms have two bases, and they are congruent, so this triangle is the same as this triangle up here. So I'm going to put a number two inside my triangle and circle it, and that's going to help me when I go to find my areas. Next thing, next side I want to focus on is this side back here. That is a rectangle. It might look like a parallelogram from this angle, but it's actually a rectangle. If we turned that prism around, we would see it's just a regular rectangle. When we, do, uh, when we draw this rectangle, we're going to have to label the units. So here's my picture of the rectangle. It has a three centimeter side here and an 11 centimeter side here. I know the 11 isn't shown right here, but I'm using this distance right here. That's 11. And that's, um, those are the dimensions of my rectangle. 3 by 11. Only one of those rectangles exists in this prism. Next shape I want to focus on is that bottom piece in red. That bottom piece is also a rectangle. It's a little bit of a bigger rectangle. So I'll do my best drawing that. Its dimensions are 4 by 11. So I'll label my dimensions. And there's only one of those. So I'm going to go back here and put my 1 in and another 1 here. I have one more side to my prism. And it's this kind of top piece here, that rectangle. So one more rectangle for us. And it's a big one, the biggest of them all. 
So I'm going to sketch it. Its dimensions are 5 by 11. And there's only one of them. A hint to you, if the triangle here has three different side lengths, then all of my rectangles are going to have different measurements. Um, if my triangle were isosceles and had two congruent side lengths, then I would have two congruent rectangles used to make um, that prism. But since all the sides are different, then all the rectangles are going to be different. So we're going to go through this a little quickly. Uh, my first shape here was the triangle. That formula is area equals base times height divided by 2. The base is 4, the height is 3. And I'm going to quickly solve this because I'm running out of space. 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2 is 6 square centimeters. Next we have the rectangle right here. That's area equals base times height. Base is 3, height is 11, and 3 times 11 is 33 square centimeters. This rectangle I'm going to do up here, area equals base times height. That's 4 times 11, and that gets me 44 square centimeters. And down here, area equals base times height one more time. That's 5 times 11 and that's 55 square centimeters. So I've done step one, sketch all my faces. I've done step two, find all the areas. My final step is to take all of my areas and add them together to find the surface area. So I'm gonna start with my triangle. I'm going to remember that there are two of those triangles, so I'm gonna add six twice. Then I'll add my 33, my 44, and my 55. And when I add them together, I'll get 12, 15, 19, 24. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 5 is 10, plus 4 is 14. So my surface area is 144 square centimeters. I'm going to write that a little bit more clearly here. Surface area equals 144 square centimeters. So surface area does not take long. You just have to be patient and you have to sketch out all those sides, find the areas, and add them all up. Your assignment tonight, I want you to do number two on page eight. This is a prism, I'm sorry, a pyramid, so you'll be using triangles, a lot of triangles in this one. Make sure your formula card is up to date and don't forget to do your Google form.